Shit! Heavens. <laughs> oh, by the way, people watching at home, I'm gonna say pussy and shit. Do whatever the fuck I want, cause I'm paying for the bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you, I rose up from the ashes like a phoenix. The pandemic has changed me, eh? We don't know where the fuck it's gonna end up. It, it, you could, it could be on the gas pump at fucking Times Market. <laughs> I'm gonna put it somewhere, alright? Cut that one out, I don't wanna get canceled. <laughs> Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, new podcast, new podcast alert, new podcast alert. Uh, you know, you've already checked out Cafecito Time, Her Lounge, RPT. This right here is What Did He Said Podcast, coming at you live from the RPT Studios. I don't know, Chingo Bling Network, something or other. But uh, we have uh, DJ producer Big Rob manning the ship. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're one camera short, so you can't see him. It's all right. So, hey, when we get the Patreon going, you know what I'm saying? Y'all pitch in and shit. Y'all peep his beard. We got uh, Juan Perez in the building up, with the blue up. blazer in tow. Blue blazer. We have Javi Luna representing <laughs> we re represent the, the pastels today. You the, know what I'm saying? It's an Easter episode, eh? <laughs> the Easter. Drop this on Easter, big doc. <laughs> Save uh, this one. Yeah, man. Uh, tour days, brother. What's up, man? You hitting the road? You got some... Uh, tour day? I'm um, on on the road here, here and there. Uh, so Fe February 11th, I'll be in Corpus. Uh, February, January 28th, I'll be in Bass Trap. I know I went reverse. But really, uh, the, the the big one is I'll be releasing my uh, self-produced uh, one hour. I'm not calling it a special because I did it myself. But but uh, I think it'll hold up against it, anything else. That when do you drop it? Right now, it's going to come out uh, beginning of March. We're looking at either March 3rd or March 10th. We're going to go the YouTube route because that seems to be where, where people are... are uh, absorbing comedy the most mm -hmm. these days and i and the whole purpose of me recording my own thing was so that people can uh, can can uh be introduced to my comedy on a on a larger what was the name of the, of the what's the project called a javi luna not for everybody not for everybody yeah, one hour everybody. stand up i shot it there in my hometown of corpus man and uh knocked and, it out the park and it was probably recorded two of them, probably my best sets in recent memory on the same night and, damn and, mm. and uh, that's did, awesome did a did a combined about a two and a half hours of comedy with that with with about like 30 to 40 minutes of no overlap between the shows so and so the good one thing i'm happy that i waited as long as i did is i have a uh, plenty of material still like if you if you watch this you're not going to come to my <clears throat> show and and hear what you just saw so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Well, yeah, Javi Luna is one of the greats, man. Honored to have you on the show. What did he say podcast? Uh, it's your boy Chingo Bling. Don't worry, y'all. Uh, we'll have a jingle and all kinds of cool shit. But subscribe to the YouTube. Ching, 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 jingo Bling. <laughs> there it is. Oh, what did he say? Somewhere else with that. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I was like, hold up, dog. Jingle, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> ching, ching, chingo, chingo, bling. Podcast. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? I need everybody to say, what did he say? I just heard a slur. That's what I was like, oh, man. I just heard slurs. I was like, hold up, dog. I, I need y'all to say, what did he say? What did he say? Yeah, because I can sample it for the beat. What did he say? 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 Okay, for sure. <laughs> Boom. I also have tour dates because I'm also a comedian. Um, we, my wife and I, we sat down to start mapping out some of these tour dates. We've been busy. We've been juggling so much. It feels like we're... Normally, she always says it. She's like, 
normally I would have already had the tour scheduled six months ago. You know what I mean? You you know how we oh, yeah, we normally roll. Where it's like you already had so, the creative director make the the branding, the specific tour branding, the specific tour merch, and the tour name and all that. So um, I don't know what this tour is going to be, Chingo and friends. However. Uh, we're coming in hot, man. We're starting it off January 25th in McAllen with my boy Raymond Orta. January 26th, South Padre Island, also with Raymond Orta. And then January 27th in Laredo, also with Raymond Orta. And, dude, we haven't even really announced it. And tickets are already already selling, which is crazy. Uh, we also have Corpus Christi, February 2nd through the 4th. Naples, Florida, March 5th. Feels like we were just out there. I, I, I loved it out there. I want to yeah, go back. It was an adventure. It was quite the adventure. Naples? Naples, Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, Southwest off, Florida. Off the, off the hook. Off the, off the hook. hook. <clears throat> and uh, they got hit with that storm real bad, man. Oh, so, yeah, that's um, right. Your yes. first time back since then? Yeah, yeah, March 5th. So um, it's going to be interesting. Ooh, we my, had a good time last time. My we birthday, there. March oh, 2nd. Some, We're going to do this. There's out there, Ooh. man. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very yeah, litty. Good time. Very litty. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, all the tour dates, man. We also got like Odessa um, in March. Uh, I think we're going to hit San Angelo in March. Fresno, March 23rd. Merced, California, March 24th. Visalia, California, March 25th. Anyway, hit up the website. Get you some merch on the website. Sign up to the newsletter. You know, you know, join, join the fam, man. <clears throat> Come on into the fold and join the fam, brother. It's all about family. It's all about family, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Don't you want Theo Hooven as a, as a Theo? Yeah, don't you want Theo Hoover to be your Theo? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You can pull are, that towards you, Javi. Are, are, you, are, you are you on Cameo and stuff? Do you do like yeah, Theo man. Hoover cameos? Bro, there's a lot of potential in that, and I just can't wait to like get better at it. Uh-huh. But uh, but yeah, little by little, man, that I think the word's spreading. Where people, they must be showing their friends. Yeah, I can something. see that, because I feel like like in your catalog, right, pe- people have their favorite characters of yours. So the idea to like get a, a birthday drop or whatever from their either you or or you is like is cinnamon blame character yeah yeah or exactly. somebody yeah cinnamon. i mean i got all the wigs and shit right no, here right. might cinnamon, as well mamado motivation we got all that we got everything we got everything man we got Look, everything we got studios, studios. studios. cameras and chingle lights the and shit. we got broadband the, wi-fi chingle the problems Chingo the chingo the bills. Uh, get your coffee cups now. <laughs> <laughs> Support that. So yeah, man. New episode. Thank you for stopping by. How was the drive up here, man? Foggy. No it shit. Was super foggy all, all morning, man. But and it took forever. Usually the sun comes out and burns off that fog. But like Waterburger was almost done serving breakfast by the time that fog Dang. like finally lifted, man. Like, what, what? You still rocking the Toyota? Yeah, man. The Camry, that tour Camry, man. Dude, that tour Camry's been through it. Through man, that 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 Camry, uh, not, knock on wood, man. Here, go talking about it. it, it, it it's a two hundred forty thousand. Oh, that's nothing for man. that. I've I've driven that thing uh, to to Phoenix, Arizona, two or three times. Wow. I've driven it to, to from and this is from Corpus, to out there, Corpus to Nashville, what? Cor- Corpus to Toledo, Ohio. Which, which, if you pass uh, U.S. geography, <laughs> might as well have driven to Canada. <laughs> might as well. So I live two hours from 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 the, from the U.S. Mexico border on the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty much, I pretty much drove drove across the the country in that thing in twenty four hours and damn. Back. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it's it's been everywhere, man. Javi's a true royer. Damn, two hundred and forty k. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Toyota commercial. Man, you must stay on top of it. I bought it used. I think I bought it like just maybe over 50,000 miles. So I, the majority of those miles. I, How long have I you had it? Put on them. It's, 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 it's a relic from my, from my first marriage. <laughs> we just bought it. So I think I got it in 2014. And then you put 190,000 miles getting away from your first marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's the only thing I kept from the first marriage. I'm, like, I'm about to take this car. Every, We're not against wives. Everywhere. We're not against marriage, you know but we saying? are against. No, not against exes. marriage. I mean, I'll, I'll, We're I, against I, exes. I went and did it again, so you know. Oh. Yeah. When you got a good one, man, you got to lock them in. Yeah. That's sure. Lock them in. That's been a theme of the week, actually. Chino's been saying that a lot. When you got a good one, lock I them in. I say that all the time. Yeah. Even though I mean, Marisol ain't perfect, you know. We're, we're, especially some mornings. We're coming up on, on that Valentine's, guys. <laughs> you know, yeah, you creeping start, up. Start planning now. Surprise you this year, not, but not the last, not the not the flowers you got from the senora on the corner mm-hmm. with the under the canopy. Step it up. Not the fucking teddy bear. Not the ch- do some. How do you step it up, Javi? Give this boy some game. You know what I'm saying? Like like. 
think about what they what she would genuinely like like to to do about to knock all the chingo shit over. No, nah, I just don't want that one with, piece of metal with, to fall with, on you. With my bullshit yeah. uh, over here. Yeah, uh, you know, plan plan a fucking a day of things that she would in, in I hope my wife doesn't listen to this. <laughs> Do See, it, man. she was trying to do you less. Know, you know, you it, need to talk to Javi more. It doesn't have to be anything great, man. Like, if she likes coffee, man, be like, hey, let's go out. Let's go. World's greatest nice, cup of coffee. Take her to a nice coffee shop, maybe one that y'all haven't been to yet, yet before. You know, if she likes books, okay, well, let's, let's go get some books. Let's go get some coffee. Taking notes. Afterwards. If her name is Mighty Soul and if she loves know, coffee, hey, yeah, if, so. if she likes coffee, get her some Red Pill Blend. Right there. Ooh, some of that Red Pill Blend, man. Right. Order you know Hey, you know how pissed you know, off Mighty Soul would be if you gave her that shit. <laughs> Here, baby, I thought of you. <laughs> She'd be like, "Really? More red pill blend? Really? More red pill blend?" She's like, "I thought we gave it all away to family for Christmas." No, I'm kidding. I, t- I took Harvey's advice. He told me to get some coffee. Shit. Oh, was that your stocking stuffer? Ever- so, some some people in my family got, got you know a little bag of espresso. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah! I, a little stocking stuffer. Got a little bit of her apparel. I need yeah. merch that I can I, love, I love that with gi- giving, giving merch. <laughs> <laughs> your own merch. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Chingo Bling hat. Grandma, did you like your Chingo Bling hat? Your you Chingo like. Bling socks? You make them feel guilty when they open yeah. it. Wait, you don't you don't like my stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You don't support me? You don't jam mixtapes from 05? <laughs> Mom, Theo gave me a masa house. I was learning how to rap. Okay, okay, but at least your your merch is, is fucking fire. Yeah, it's legit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen, I've seen like, comics that are, like, not quite past the open mic level. And they already got that early merch that, that it's really just a joke of theirs written on a shirt. <laughs> oh, they're like, oh yeah, I yeah. gave this to my family for Christmas. It's like, oh man, <laughs> 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 that went to good. That was at Goodwill before New Year's, bro. Like, that, didn't, that didn't even get put in a drawer. Oh, damn. It's not a night night shirt or nothing. <laughs> yeah. You tell me, Grandma don't like the fuck it. I'm down shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Shout out to Jerry oh, Garcia. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I, I love Jerry, but Fuck I know dude. for I, without even asking him, I know for a fact he's giving a fucking I'm down shirt as, <laughs> as a birthday present to one of. I'm his almost positive, yeah, or something. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the come and toke it tray. That's a good gift. You see that little rolling up go. tray? It's a rolling up tray, man. It says come and toke it. Maybe, maybe you got a little marijuana in your love life. You know? yeah. Maybe you want a, a relic from the Chingo de Mayo events. So you can get a Chingo de Mayo beer mug, you know. You know what I'm saying? All this available at Chingo Pulga. <laughs> <laughs> Digital <laughs> Pulga. No, it's at podcastpulga.com. Click in the link yeah. down below. Podcast Pulga. Hey, you know what? Maybe we could use Podcast Pulga as like a as like a collective where the way the Hive and Marisol do all these different like vendors or partners, they call it. Maybe if uh, like Javi and Juan have some stuff, we put it all on the Podcast Pulga. I ain't got nothing. People, <laughs> what's your fucking reason to go get, make something? Oh, okay, my bad. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's not like he's trying to pitch you a custom show under the Chingo Bling umbrella. <laughs> I meant merch. I meant merch. But, oh, but show as well. Merch up? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, he so, was, so that's y'all's that's y'all's online store? That's gonna be Podcast one of them, but I mean that could be yeah, that could be the one where because we're gonna put like her lounge, coffee at the time, this. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna join the fold, man? Be like ATC, big da, all things you know common. Saying, exactly. You know I'm saying two vatos, one uh, two vatos one K, big da. Yeah. You know I'm saying? yeah. I, I got our own channel. So now as if this drops, we'll talk about it later. But uh if you go to Apple right now, you could look up the Chingo Bling Podcast Network or just look up Chingo Bling, Chingo Bling and you'll see a channel on Apple, which is kind of like a newer thing. Have you seen it, Javi? Where you can make channels. Uh, no, so the name really, Chingo isn't gonna so, screw so anything. My, my yeah. podcast has been on hiatus, it's coming back. Oh, uh, next month. Nice, mm. but, but yeah, yeah. So, so I need, need to get up on game. I'll yeah, there's a lot of changes because uh, you know with all subscription services, you mm-hmm. know, like Patreon, which has been very good to RPT uh, and her lounge, but uh, you can make networks on iTunes. You know, as a part of as a content creator. So we have the Chingo Bling <coughs> Network, and it's got four shows: her lounge, RPT, Coffee at the Time, and what did he said now? And then from there, you can do other uh, you know subscriptions and whatnot. So there's gonna be like a Patreon. Mm-hmm. Within the thing, I don't. Yeah. I'm not all the way up on it, but uh, the yeah. mastermind behind the scenes. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, he may not have a camera on him right now. You know, what I'm saying? but he, yeah. but his mastermind is some shit. Yeah, he might have thought Faith Hill was a member of the Fugees. God damn it! But <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Even I knew that. One. Shut the fuck up! They did. And the next no, day, you're like, I didn't know that either. It was like a verbal typo. He's like, uh, Faith Hill. No, you know what fine. I meant. He knew what I meant too. Because Rob doesn't see color, you see. Yeah, yeah he definitely. I don't see, see color. color. No, I mean he replaced Lauren Hill with Faith Hill in his mind. He's like, I'm gonna edit the Fugees. <laughs> Lauren Faith. I mean, those, those are those <laughs> are replaceable names. Yeah, yeah. good artist. Those those are multi ethnic names. You know <laughs> exactly. Javi Melting pot. 
Melting pot. There's even Mexicans named Faith. I know Faith Lo- Faith Lopez. Faith <laughs> 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 Lopez. <laughs> Lauren Lopez. Yeah. And then or Lauren Lauren Han. You know, it can, you can, Lauren, Faith, Lauren, those can be used. You know, interchangeably. Javi's got, got my back. What was the last time you've been in Houston? Oh, when is the last time I've been here? It, it's been a, it's been a minute. Probably the last time I was I was here with you at the Improv, which got to be like over Oof. <laughs> over a year ago. Oof, Chingle Bling at the Houston Improv. That's been a minute. Yeah, that's been a hot minute. Not last year, but the the December before last year, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. it might 21. be November, like November. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, I don't come this way too much unless I have like a, <laughs> unless I have to, yeah. Unless I have to, yeah, yeah. Like old Harris County. A lot, lot of uh, <laughs> not, a lot of people here, man. I'm 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 from a small town called Quick on a Cop's Ass. No, <laughs> house party reference, yeah. You, you know, uh, no, of a, of a you know relatively small city. So so house so, party was a film starring American comedian uh, Martin Lawrence and uh, yeah, never saw <laughs> starring oh. Martin Lawrence. <laughs> he stole the scene. It's the most hilarious thing ever. He stole the scene. He did. He did. He did. You don't remember? Hey, don't don't bump but the anyway. table, man. Kid. Yeah, that, that's Rob over there right now. Yeah, right don't bump, now. Hey, don't like, bump don't, the don't table. Bump the, don't bump the table. <laughs> don't bump the table. Don't bump the table. <laughs> or the tri- no one's knocked over a tripod. You guys are doing good. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, so so coming to a, a what are y'all up to now? Like seven million? Oh, I don't know, dude. But like Marisol told me some statistics. She's like, that's she's like, she, people, she was like, I think y'all are. She said, I think we're tied with LA now population. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. I was like, are you telling me we like completely passed Chicago? Because it was always a debate. Of like New York, L.A., Chicago, then Houston. Like we were fourth largest for the longest, but from time to time, depending on mm-hmm. if it was like Chicago proper, Houston yeah. proper, if you add in Schaumburg or Katy mm-hmm. and suburbs and shit, it's like we were always like neck and neck and crime, murder rate, homicides, mm-hmm. you know, catalytic converter games, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, carjackings. Did you see the new one, the vigilante? <laughs> That's Yo, new. did y'all see the vigilante? No, I, that's <laughs> that's the new Mad Max, man. They're gonna be walk, running around the desert. catalytic. What converter. is it? What is it? The Hunger Games? It's like the Hunger Games for catalytic converters. Yo, so this vigilante <laughs> thing has been that's, going viral. That's the next Fast and the Furious. <laughs> did, did you hear about this, Rod? The vigilante. They made memes and everything. The guy from the taco shop. Yeah, from yeah. the taqueria. I don't know if you heard about Mm-mm. that. You're not yeah. a local yet. You ain't been here long yeah, enough. Otherwise, you'd been in. The... Yeah. So anyway. There's a taqueria like on the southwest side some, somewhere. I, I can't even remember the name or mm-hmm. I don't even think I've been there. And there's people and they're eating. Some like deranged person with a gun, apparently, turns out it was fake, is like robbing people. Like, give me a shit, give me a shit, going table to table. And this little viejito, like straight out of a movie of like fucking uh, mm-hmm. Clint Eastwood type shit. You feeling lucky, punk? And so he shoots the guy like pa 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 like nine times. It gives every while they're fucking the jukebox is playing. So when you see the security footage with music, it's like a movie, like a Tarantino. Yeah, it's some Tarantino shit. It's, like, it's kind of like Menace Wait, Society. is that the one that where he walked in, got the money, and then he was walking out, and the and guy then he shot, shot him from the back? I think he shot him from the back. That's uh, that's why they're calling. I saw him that in. part, but they cut that part off from me. So they're so. calling him in for questioning, right? He's not in trouble. Yeah, right. Because they were gonna be on his ass, bro. But anyway, shoots the guy. Everybody gets their shit back. And then they're like, well, I guess we're all going to go home. And everybody just starts leaving little by little, one by one. And even the guy, the vigilante. So now it's like people are like, we need information because we want to talk to the guy. But he's become this huge like folklore uh, meme. They made the, uh, the Loteria del Valiente and they put him instead. Yeah. And, uh, and like Death Wish, almost like Death Wish. Fuck. See? So everybody's saying, Fucking yeah, so everybody's reference. saying, like, yo, y'all better not the turn new it in. remake. That's mm. <laughs> so that's like the new scoop in, in the Ache. Wow. Yeah. Another reason why Javi doesn't come. Yeah, yeah, it's just too many people. Man. Dude, that's nine. So, but, but he shot him nine times. That's why. I was like, Oof. I mean, I'll come visit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I needed no, a bigger I'll... magazine. Should have had one with a 15 plus one. Not just <laughs> Next that. time he's going to be like, can we meet in Katie? Can we meet, can we meet a little closer? <laughs> uh, what county is that? Yeah. Yeah. So What's your that? studios, is that in Montgomery County? <laughs> one day, Houston's still the fourth, 2.3 mil, almost okay. 2.4. But it's Damn. only, it's just under Chicago. Like it's almost tied with Chicago. Damn. And then you have LA and New York, which New York's at 8.6 million people. Well, fucking dude, first of all, Mexico City, Shanghai, them kind of cities... 
It makes that's different level. They, they, they build it. There's levels, levels, it's levels. That, literally. So, I mean, just in general, like yeah. Mexico City isn't known for their like skyscrapers, but mm. it's a shit ton of people. Mm. You want to take a guess real quick since you're on the subject of what the population of Tokyo is? Oh, Tokyo. That's uh, the biggest. 22? 37. 37 million? Damn. It's like a fucking ant hive, ant pile. I'm too big for that place. Shanghai's 26. Yeah, we went, we went there. Fucking crazy. But like, like there's a, I saw some comedians in, in Shanghai when we went mm -hmm. and some of the jokes were like, oh, I met this uh, person, da, 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 and you know, they're from a small province in, in China and they're like, yeah, you know, only 18 million. So like the joke is your shit's considered a village even though it's like 12 million people. Uh, I think you're going to go over like, so I met this person, any of y'all know him? It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. Dude, Mexico City's number five at 21.6 million people. That's an interesting city, too. That's cool. Great Cairo, food. 20 million? Egypt? Oh, wow. That's crazy. Good. And how much? Yeah. How many? How many is here? Here's two point four. Oh. Two point four, really? Houston's two point four million. Yeah, Chicago's two point six. That's the accounted ones, right? That's it's probably exactly. like Houston point, proper, right? That's yeah. probably how they're doing. Houston, Galveston, yeah. Galveston. I, I, I could have huh. sworn y'all were approaching five huh. years ago when I was Let, in college. Let's get our facts straight real quick. So, the Houston number mm -hmm. is it just Houston proper, or like plus the annex sub suburbs and. I'll look. I'll, I'll put, pop it okay. back up. Wait, when there. is that? What, what what year is that? Is that for this? It year? says by yeah. It says twenty twenty three population. Okay. Wow. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought I thought I had passed. I think that I number. I don't think that number is counting passing suburbs. Passing three million, like when I was still in high school, like. Yeah. Because when I when I was in college, San Antonio hit one point three. Yeah. And that was like a big deal. Like. What we're not accounting for is the murder rate, but okay. <laughs> when uh when I That's first just the one you know about <laughs> yeah when I first went to uh, high school out there in New Jersey and uh, and they're like oh what Texas they're like oh shit do you ride a horse to school like yeah. do y'all have oh, like just, shit. that's what they think because of Hollywood and the media and shit so they're just like oh fuck Texas they're almost like yeah. can we like touch this alien where's your cowboy hat like, you know, <laughs> where's we, your got, cowboy we, hat? we got three of the ten largest cities like in the country in this and they don't state. they don't think about that do you know like, Earth? they don't even think of like yeah. how diverse they just think like oh fuck that's a lot of white people and it's like uh or like oh shit so like desert it's like actually no it's humid as fuck well i mean it's we like have, totally we, opposite we, but yeah we got desert too yeah, and, we, and the other part we got of different state. climates. It's big enough to have different we climates. Deserts, and shit. We got mountains. We got bayous. Got everything, we, baby. Swamp. We got, we got beaches. We get, depending it, on the spot, you got all the 90s, four seasons. They, they Brackish have, waters. Do you remember the? Uh, uh, there used to be a uh, uh, like Texas tourism campaign called Texas. It's like a whole other country. It, it had Bob Phillips, the the Dairy Queen dude. He used to do them, and it, and that that was the whole thing. Like, there's a little bit of something. Oh yeah. In Texas, like you, 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 you can, you can get. If you go East Texas, you you can get that Louisiana mm -hmm. Bayou Swamp feel. And, yeah. And if if you go to Dallas or or Houston or I think I think they made Houston more like the little country or, and Dallas was like that metropolitan feel. It feels like you're in New York, you know. And, and <laughs> San Antonio, San Antonio was like, oh, am I in Mexico? No, I'm in San Antonio. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. It's like Texas. It's like a whole other country. It's the puffy taco, you know. So, so according to most places, it, it's just like Houston. Like it's got the the map. So it's not counting like even Katy or Spring or whatever. It's just like just the Houston, Houston area. Proper. Houston proper is two point six. Yeah, yeah. Or two point four. Once you add Kingwood, Spring, yeah. Woodlands, you come to Houston proper often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite. I guy. try not quote to. from Urban Urban Cowboy. Oh fuck no! I, that, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't really remember. You don't remember. I don't think I nope. sat and watched it. Too all. young? Nope, too young. Oh, okay. I'm not really in the cowboy stuff. No, it's really like Brokeback Mountain. It's like, really it's, like cowboy. it's urban it's cowboy. Thing. Urban cowboy. Yeah, that, cowboys that was, and I urban. Ju I, I just watched it recently, but that that's always been one of my favorite quotes. He, he's so, so he's like living out like, so they're always going to Gillies. Where was that at? Like in the Pasadena da area? Uh, Gillies? Somewhere? I could have swore that was all like in Dallas. I thought Gillies was. No, in Gillies is down around here. Really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so so he's working like he come he moves from the country to like to like work in like the refineries right and goes to to this country club he hooks up with this like 
high society girl that comes like slumming it looking for like a, a cowboy at, at the kicker bar and like she brings him she has this apartment in a high, high rise apartment and, and she's like do you come to Houston proper often that's hilarious <laughs> yeah. oh dude in Yellowstone there's this chick who's supposedly from Texas and she's one of the ranch hands that they're living in that like bunker house on the Yellowstone ranch the Dutton ranch and she has like this I don't know if you, we'll probably get dinged and shit but I think they call her Texas on the show it's the worst, weirdest fucking accent where I literally think to myself, like, this fucking starving actress, L.A. waitress, and her fucking rendition of a Tejano. You know what I mean? Like, bitch. Mm. And I was like, man, fuck. What's the guy's name? The the dude, the, the fucking fame. Kevin Costner. Oh, Kevin I was like, Costner. man, fuck Kevin Costner for that shit. <clears throat> they always do Texas like that. It's always like, y'all couldn't, like, all those starving actor and people in texas i mean in uh, la that are from texas like y'all couldn't get a fucking accent coach y'all couldn't get somebody for cultural freaking appre- appropriation like mm. they've they've assim- i'm triggered they've assimilated they've assimilated so gilly is is it was in pasadena yeah there's a this it's not open anymore obviously but there's uh three other ones vegas dallas and oklahoma right. the one i saw was in dallas mm. urban cowboy never saw it but uh, who was it? Uh, yeah. John, John, uh, John, Travolta. John Travolta. It was John Travolta. Oh, okay. Yeah. I he's like, like John Travolta. He's like, I don't know who that he, is. He played a pretty good, like, convincing, like, his Texas, Texas accent for, like, East Texas wasn't that far, like, off. Hey, um, he did a pretty decent job. How hard would it be for you to pull up that poster of, like, those classic films, like, the to do list, must watch? Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do one. Just to, it was just so you could read the titles, yeah. and we could be like, I haven't seen it. I'll, I'll make an effort. I, I don't feel know like we're all gonna that. lose at this game, except for Javi. Javi's gonna, for sure. he's got a deep knowledge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, not not as not. If you go anything before I had kids, like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like once I had kids, it, then it's all animated. Yeah, life changes, bro. Whatever, man. But but yes, in 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 my youth, like I I, I absorbed film as much as I could. I worked at a video store in high school. And so you used to be able to, uh, as an employee, you could t- take three rentals out free uh, per week, per day. Oh, if sure. You wanted. Like, as long as you brought them back, you could take out three movies. One of them could be a new release and you could take two from the video library. So that's how I got to see a lot of them. When I worked there, I used to take three home a night, you know. And, oh, you have a and, yeah, and well, video store. Every couple of days and bring. I worked for Hollywood Video. Hollywood. Yeah. It was either Hollywood or Blockbuster. Did y'all right. did y'all grow up going to video rental? Yeah, so, video oh, games. Okay. We went to Game Crazy and fucking game, you know, inside that. Mm-hmm. It was uh, connected to Hollywood Video, I think. Yeah, right? Game Crazy was was well. When I first started, it was just a little section, <clears> and then <throat> as I was leaving, it it became a standalone. It, store. it used to be a whole experience, and these kids these days, they're gonna miss out on all these like yeah. Americana cultural artifacts. Like the Pizza Huts don't look the same no more. Mm-hmm. Pizza Hut used to be a restaurant, bro. The proper. Fucking restaurant. Now, if you, if you go and and eat at a Pizza Hut, they look at you like, dude. I, I went to go eat at a Pizza Hut. They, they were like, yeah. "Oh, you're gonna eat here? All right, yeah, sit wherever you want." I guess. One of my one of my birthdays when you I was know? a kid, like my sisters <laughs> took me to Pizza Hut. Like, we're going to Pizza Hut for your birthday, and you got your little personal pan. Or you'd read the books and yeah. you get the coupon. Now you boom, take tell you parents they used to have take the you. little uh the little Pac Man Galaga. The table arcade it thing. Flat, it was a the flat table. Yeah. Right where, where you'd sit it and Dude. you could look. They had the the glass and you could look. It's down just a full frontal attack over. on our culture, bro. Well, because that was back in the day. They used to have good pizza Hut commercials. I remember the commercials. It's just you part. remember Ninja Turtles, the the first one, the yeah, yeah. Ninja Turtles that came. Out. I still remember the Pizza Hut commercial. Like I won't watch. Yeah. The actual Ninja Turtle movie, unless I see that commercial you first. Because that first commercial is like the kids just out in the outfield <laughs> with the glove. Just yes, kids. yes. That's true. that's Bro. the Pizza Hut commercial. Yes, it so was. They, well, we won, or we're going to yeah. Pizza Hut. I was right field, and he's just right there with this ball in his hand. He's like, I caught it. And it's like the little smallest kid on the thing Bro. out there in the white field playing with the flowers. I gotta watch that commercial. The ball and they all pick them up on their shoulders, and they that. take them to Pizza Hut at the end. Bro, celebrate the- yeah, good Remember what they took in. from us, bro. Remember what they took from us. All right, so uh, this is from uh, so these posters are called like the top 100 movie bucket list. And the idea is you're supposed to scratch them off and watch all those movies, and you will okay. have watched like the 100 top movies. This is I am also IMDb, like they use their like algorithm for most right. favorited and reviewed movies or whatever. So, number one, Shawshank Redemption, never saw it. 
Let me give you the. T- I'll, I'll go five at a time, real quick. Okay. So Shawshank, yeah. The Godfather, Godfather Two, The Dark Knight, and uh, is that twelve or I don't know, Twelve Angry Men. Twelve Angry Men, yeah, it's Twelve Angry Men, I think. Yeah. Oh, I, I know, know. I, I I know it, but I don't think I, I've ever. I seen think it. Dark Knight's the only one I've seen. I I've haven't seen, seen the, the Godfather. I'm over here like Menace to Society ain't on that I, goddamn I've seen, list I've yet. Seen the, the Dark Knight. Night. What was the first one? Uh, Shaw, uh, Shawshank Redemption. I've seen Shawshank Redemption. In part, out yeah. of sequence. Only yeah, that's me it's too. It's on TV. Yeah, same. Like my entire youth. Like same. It was on TNT like every single day. <laughs> TNT. You're watching it in different orders all the time, yeah. over and over again. Uh, all Godfather the 1 and 2, yeah. Yes, because I, yeah, I, I, read, I read the book first, and then I, then I made, a, made it a point to watch them. So are those like must-watches? Must-watch, you think, Godfather? I'm, Godfather I'm, in the same bo- I'm in the same boat as him, where it's kind of like... I'd have to go like really make an effort to be like, all right, movie night. I'm scratching it off. Like, don't bother me. I'm gonna sit here and really absorb and study. Like, yeah. I haven't really and, done that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Godfather One is is I mean, is it is a, a cinematic masterpiece. I mean, uh, two. I, I I mean, I don't think it was it, it held up as, as as good as the other. See, I would, I would, I wouldn't mind watching them, but I didn't grow up in that phenomenon. So, like, but the thing is, is like, I know the movies are fucking long as shit. So the thing with that is, if it came out like an Alamo Draft House, I'm down. But like, if anything else, like, I'm not gonna make an effort to go out of my way to try to stream it because I know it's too damn long. Mm-hmm. So I have to be like, I'm gonna go to a movie theater and watch this because it's out right now. Uh, and t- the fourth one was Dark Knight, like the Batman Dark Knight. No, it's an, got a, it's another one. It's like a fist, it, unless that's. Nah. It's got to be Dark Knight. Actually, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, Dark Knight. K N I. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess so. I've only saw that once. Christian Bale, son. Yeah. Uh, rounding out the top ten, Schindler's List. Anybody? Yes. I saw it a long time I ago. Saw it in school, so school. it doesn't count. Um, I mean, I saw it. No, when you get when you're watching it 45 minutes at a time, like it, Class. Like you lose <laughs> something. You lose something. The next one, the image is way too small. I can't see the logo. Pulp Fiction, number eight. Yeah. Uh, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly, nine. Wait, Pope Fiction, yeah. Good, Bad, the Ugly, Good, bad, and Fight Club yeah. number ten. Fight Club, I've seen. Fight Club's amazing. I mean, wait, that's... which one's Good, Bad, and the Ugly about? Who, never saw it. It's a Clint, Clint Eastwood, isn't it? Oh, oh that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. So those are the top ten, one hundred movies bucket list must watch. Wait, keep going. Where'd you stop at? 10? I stopped at ten. Yeah, Fight Club was number ten. <laughs> okay. Want to do five more? Are we yeah, five? yeah. Joker. Joker was number eleven. Yeah, the new it. one? Uh, I guess so because it's the yeah, only one. Yeah. Yeah. That one made the list. I guess. I mean, this must be super updated. I'm not hearing any other than Shawshank. I'm not hearing any. I'm not other hearing ones. like Casablanca I mean, or Tra- any of no, the, like, the Shawshank main. and Godfather were, but like it used to be like Citizen Kane and so Forrest like, Gump. Forrest Gump, of course. Yeah. Uh, I never liked it. Uh, Inception. Nope. Yeah, I liked it. Goodfellas. Like it? Yes. Goodfellas. Uh, yeah, a lot. Never saw Goodfellas. Never saw that. You ever seen Casino? Yes. Rob, I went through no. I went through a, a, a gangster movie phase like that. Like, oh yeah, I enjoyed that genre. It's a yeah, dark it's a good genre. The Joe Pesci, fucking, fucking hobby. It's a dark time in my life. I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. It's just what you're into, man. Like you, you, know, you go through little. So so like for example, uh, I'm the type of dad that we're watching Home Alone, right? And obviously Joe Pesci had that his repertoire first mm-hmm. and this was like a little side quest project like sure i'll be a fucking little bad guy who can't cuss in a kid's movie that's trying to break into this house right, right. so i'm the one telling my kids like yo y'all don't know that joe pesci he's known for cussing in all these gangster movies so as he's getting hurt by macaulay he's like yo, big figure. he's having to make up his own little language because mm-hmm. he can't do what he normally does mm-hmm. So I'm like, y'all don't even know who this is, man. I know him from the first time I ever saw him was on Lethal Weapon. So I know him as that guy. Comedic Joe Pesci <clears throat> is, is great. I mean, just attested to how. Oh, how and my good cousin an Vinny. I cu- I just watched my cousin Vinny the other night. Still holds up, dude. That one, I I might have watched nice, that one. <sighs> I want to say at least 30, 40 times. He did another movie that that people don't talk about as much that I loved as a kid. Uh, I haven't watched it recently to see if it holds up, but it was called The Super, where he played a he played a superintendent of a, of like a like a slum apartment, like in in his dad was a slum lord in New York, and get, left him this building, and the and the people like sued, and so the judge, just punishment for him was he had to live in the building until he fixed everything that was wrong with it. So he he's like this like rich 
like spoiled dude that has to like live in live in this apartment a building that he owns and you know of course he he gets close with the with the people and and whatever you you know what era did that come up that was like in the 90s i wonder when he first like like oh i was in an acting school and then i got picked for this thing or if like by chance i'm really curious about how he even His got in the game but uh the, also the dad on elf he was in i think um godfather james or, Conn. yeah he was in godfather no, he was in or good. Yes, he, no, he was in. He was in Godfather. Yes. He, see, that's, that's like the shit where it's like you see where he grabs a uh, buddy the elf and the and mm-hmm. when he goes to bail him out, he's like, I had one phone call and I called my dad. Da, da, da. He's like, Hey, what do you want? Money? Is it money you want? You know, punk or whatever. And it's like, okay, it, like there's so many little Easter eggs in a lot of these movies where like I don't know if y'all know, but um, especially Elf, mm-hmm. where like the kid from um. Uh, Christmas story, you shoot your eye out. Mm-hmm. He was like one of the elves, and like they did a lot of that mm-hmm. little wink stuff in there. Yeah, let, me, let me give you a five more. Uh, and th- this is just obviously their order. Maybe not be like the exact order, but you got the Empire Strikes Back. Any Star Wars fans? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Matrix One, uh, American History X. Yep. Uh, Green Mile. Nope. And uh, what is this? You know, what's the Green Mile? City of God. I can't, I can't do those movies as long. Uh, you, you can't do what? What was that one again? The, City of God. City of God. Was that the one with Patrick Swayze? No, that's the uh, Brazil. Oh. Brazil, yeah. The, the favelas and the little kids and shit. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, wait. No, no. Okay. Is that Sounds American, like though? What? Is that under, considered an American film? I feel like some of this shit might be IMDb propaganda, though. I mean, that's why I started with the whole caveat. Like, this is IMDb's algorithm. What happened to the poster that was just list? like... Was- what? Schindler's List? Was Schindler's, I mean, I'm sure America? it's a hundred movies. The, I mean, the, the Lion King made it. Lion King won. <laughs> what? The Lion King was on there? Yeah. You know, we were talking about, so you, before, in between podcasts, we we're talking about like writing and movies and films and stuff. And then we talked about AI. Mm-hmm. So I was going to, I wanted to put Juan on the spot because he was like, AI is going to ruin writing and comedy, essentially, or ruin like people's ability to be creative on their own. Do you think that's true, or do you think it's? It, I th- my my point of view was it should be a tool to help like writers block or help kind of push you over the. But finish can line. they write comedy yet? But the AI, oh, I'm sure. If uh, it, it, yeah. I'm sure it can. Other stuff. I'm sure if you told it to write me a stand up routine, this I'm was sure. yeah. <laughs> this was my point. This I'll was have my it right. I'll try to deliver it. This was my point. It kind of goes yeah, to Albert Einstein, is. where he's like, "We're gonna get dumber as a society whenever we get something where it it can do that." So like, my example to Rob was like phones. Before we had phones, I remember at least 10 phone numbers off the top of my head. Bam. Now, we get I can't fucking, to save my life. I used to know a sense of direction as far as, I still have a little bit of it. Like, I have a sense of where I'm going. But, like, to know the streets and read the street, I don't even look at the streets no more because of, of GPS. I like to know, especially layout of, like, my city or where I'm living. Like, say if I'm living in L.A. at the time or, or whatever, like... I want to kind of know, like, okay, if I'm in East LA and I want to drive to downtown, is that's going to be to the west of me? Or if I want to go into Hollywood, is that northwest? Like, where's the valley? Where's Oxnard? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I kind of want to know San Diego's that way, which, right. you know what I'm yeah, saying? I got, I got that much. But, but my thing is, is like, for this creative piece, I'm sure it can write stuff for you and I'm sure it can come up with the stuff from the internet and make it better than what you would make it. But your certain perspective is not going to be there. So, like, for instance, I told Rob, it could, it, it could probably write jokes. But for me, for my jokes or whatever it is, I use a lot of personal stuff. Like All my jokes have to do with my life and how I lived it. So for, like, for those things, it's not going to be able to tell me those. I mean, I'm sure it, a good setup joke punch is going to be there. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're still losing that little bit of your story where it's, like, it's going to make other people lazy. So, like, the ones that are that might do it and get good all of a sudden, you know, then they're just probably taking those little jokes that they're making for them because they're just an overall joke. But at the same time, you're going to get lazy and dependent on that to where you're not going to be able to want to come up with your own thing. Cause it's, it's hard enough for me to come up with different things. And so it, I'm still learning it, but after so long of doing that, I'm going to get better at it and it's going to come out easier for me and it's going to be able to flow faster, but I'm going to lose that if I'm taking the shortcut, just taking these jokes that it's telling me to take. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was my it, point of view. Yeah, it's almost like if um, like if you told the AI, make me a nauseomatic part two. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
at what point does like the person matter in the art you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like if you were to tell it like give me uh elf part two and make will ferrell fucking the artificial will ferrell joe pesci do the things or or jim carrey like make him do the the faces and the the physicality of it like at what point does ai fall short from like it can't do what javi does it's like it's not a, it's not a person you know what I'm saying? No, I'm talking me about? versus AI. How about that? <laughs> you know what I'm set for set. What's that? Set what's that old one? The, was joke. it John bar Henry bar. or which one was it? The what? What, what's that old folk story? Tell the is it John Henry versus oh, the tractor John or something? Henry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he fucking dies at the end. Like oh shit, <laughs> I love it. Well, we said, well, and chess, he beat hey, the fucking chess, machine. Chess That's what's have been playing computers <laughs> for for decades now. Yeah, I'm not the one saying that it's going to supersede Comedian. human abilities. Yeah. Like, no, my there's definitely, I mean, for comedians, right, that, you know, yes, you can go up there with well-written jokes and, and, and do well. But the comedians that people really become fans of, there's something, there's, there's definitely a, an it factor or or it comes down to, the, yes, the writing, but also the delivery, you know, the, the, the overall performance um, yeah the ability to to one well, anybody that's ever done stand up on any kind of professional level no, knows you know the 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 set is the road map you know you 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 got you got to be fat you still got to be fast enough to to adapt if if the if the material is not not working you you got to be willing and able to pivot and if you're just going up there with a script you you're asking for yeah, the, like they problems. Like they always say, like don't be robo comic, and it's almost Boy. like it's almost like that's probably gonna be the last frontier for AI to be mm-hmm. able to. It's like it's gonna take an extra six months for it to take our jobs. But yeah, uh, you, even if even if you had them right, you would still have to, you know. Yeah, delivery, performance, you know, all that. Like oh, when I what, what I told Juan was like, well, you know, remember all the numbers. Like yeah, but then you were able to like unload your brain and remember the two or three you needed. You know, everyone knows like two or three numbers if, in case of an emergency. You don't need to remember fifty yeah. numbers. You left space for new well, stuff to go into your brain. Well, that, and I, I've always said, you know, you got to understand the, the 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 psychology of the crowd you're you're in front of. You know, I'm a big proponent of. of not everything is funny to everybody all the time. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like, so you, if you don't have that ability to read the, the room, you're, you're going to fall on your face. You, you know, it, it's just... Maybe another point why, like, Juan was saying, like, personal experience, if you have a set-up punchline, like, say you're mm-hmm. Seinfeld and you have that ability, and let's just say you happen to use ChatGPT to help you with some set-up punchlines in mm-hmm. case those scenarios, isn't it just another tool, again, to yeah. whip out of your arsenal belt? Yeah, for sure. See what I mean? So what are you saying that that um, it could be helpful? It's not like a hindrance. It's it should be helpful. It should be seen as a tool, not like oh, this is going to make me dumber or slower if I use it or replace you. Or re- it's definitely not. I, I think replace it's more you. for when I was saying. I think it's more. I, that's for me. I I would say because I know I get lazy as fuck, so I wouldn't be able to do it. Like it wouldn't be something that I would try and prescribe to unless there's something else I could use it for. But like doing that on my own, I know I'll get too dependent on it and then just not. I guess depending on what it is, but like, like I have a hard time imagining, like speaking of comedy and all that, like if when I was a little bitty kid and I was listening to Eddie Murphy raw and delirious and watching it like on the VHS and shit, like, can you imagine if uh, you're like, okay, comedy AI, give me, you know, modern day Eddie Murphy raw delirious, like part two and be like, okay, here's what I pulled up, you know, cause it'll be like, like fucking absorbing all of Eddie Murphy's like life experience and shit and downloading his tone and his voice and trajectory and uh, and the other day we pulled up uh, the Jetsons did, mm-hmm. did you see the Jetsons growing up yeah I watched it, watch it. and we uh, we watched the intro and Rob was like oh okay so motherfucker had a maid and shit and I'm like bro you know spacely space brackets motherfucker yeah and all but uh, they missed out on that Ro- unfortunately Rosie, Rosie. yeah Rosie was the, the, yeah. the maid and her little robot voice but uh but like like something like Eddie Murphy, you know, it's like how the fuck is AI gonna be like okay, based on these dick jokes, uh <laughs> yeah, it's probably, like I yeah. will give you more. Probably dick give you jokes. some fairly tight materi- material, <laughs> you know. But but see a lot of the UK people and different people like that, whenever cause they, when they were actually translating the the other comedians' jokes into like the language over there for a while. Yeah, but not UK. Well, who are you talking? Oh, about? Uh, no, there was people in UK. Like, but it's English just, already. 
Yeah, and yeah, but I'm saying like over there, like they would use like jokes from over here, like different comics from back then, and they would use it over there because they weren't familiar with that. Oh, Mexico, form. Mexico, bro. They use motherfucking little Mexican comedians. <laughs> Word on the street, they were like, <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh, la de Luis C.K. está chida. Esa sí, you know, esa sí me late. And then they'd go out there do their fucking. Over like, oh, me gusta Mitch Hedberg, güey. Esa sí. <sighs> No, la de Mitch Hedberg, güey. And then they'd go to Mexico and shit. Or they'd be in Mexico. And they're like, voy al club. Y en veces me ofrecen un plátano. Les digo, no, no quiero un plátano. <laughs> That's my favorite joke. <laughs> ¿Quieres un plátano congelado, güey? <laughs> pues, no, pues sí, dámelo congelado. Porque tal vez al rato... <laughs> Dude, I ganas. fucking love that joke. Al rato me da ganas. <laughs> wait, the <laughs> <laughs> wait, the fuck? Wait, the fuck? They, they can't do it, right? There's no punch. They they, it didn't hit the same. What do you mean? Like, like they're drawing it out? That <laughs> like they're just trying to be alty like that or what? No, well, I mean, I don't want to give away who they say this about. Okay, but okay, yeah. okay. My point is, is what Juan said, which is like, you had American stand-up, which is where it's from. It's invented here. And then you get people with, like, from a different, when there's a language barrier, it's like people don't know you're plagiarizing. So they're able to be like, oh, shit, I know English. And then the advent of YouTube, it's like, oh, shit. Oh shit! I could be like George Carlin of Mexico, That's and then they go up there and they just him. I'll take from like him. translate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Could you imagine with the AI and you get somebody like fucking Anchorman, just fucking inflection, uh, um, and start <laughs> reading <laughs> everything? Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> Pause to listen to the crowd. Yeah, I mean that definitely especially quotation pre technology days. That that was that was just that was just what the way it was done, like. Oh, but he's doing his act over there. Like, I'm doing his act. Well, I mean, look oh, at Men oh, I mean, oh, Mencia. Yeah. Mencia was yeah. like, these are the jokes at the oh, comedy yeah. store. And when I'm in fucking yeah. El Paso. It's, it's beyond, it wasn't just Mencia, though. A lot of those, you, you heard about Robin Williams. A lot of those guys that were L.A. comics and made it. Well, hey, this guy doesn't even leave L.A. His jokes aren't getting used in Ohio. So... Shit. Fuck What's it. up, Toledo? Y'all yeah. ready for this fire? And then yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the word on the street was like they would they would use the, their their influence like who are they gonna believe you or me type of thing. It was that well, kind of thing, right? And then once you reach that stardom, yeah, who's who's gonna? That was like the thing to do believe. back then. But Mencia basically was the fall guy for like the the final one to do it. But everybody, there was a lot of other Dude, comics. They gave him so many chances it. to like apologize and explain himself, like did so many podcasts and it's always yeah. like well you know i mean well, what would you mean by i could make your joke better well you know i mean what i meant the thing about it's like but did you yeah, I, mean, I mean i'm not gonna I, say the dude bought me some tacos so i'm not gonna say i mean he, hey he should <laughs> hey he showed me love bro yeah. like when he when carlos Messia first uh well i guess when i was first starting his people reached out. That's where I met like Steve Trevino, Brad, Brad Williams. I know all those dudes from like 20 years ago uh, because of Carlos Mencia. So like, so, so for example, for example, he'd be like, oh shit, this is a, you know, you do the taco shop and the ostrich booth. Like, dude, that's dope. I love what you do. Next thing you know, you go see him at the Toyota Center and they're playing like Carlos Mencia rat parodies, <laughs> tacoing it up in the fucking Toyota Center. And it's like, Motherfucker, you trying to do you you trying to be the AI of uh, the, the, <laughs> the Muslim Messiah? You trying to be a ghetto vaquero Versace Mariachi Tamale King Pit? But um, I mean that's neither here nor there. But no, when he was filming for Comedy Central, Chingo Bling calls out, calls out, Chingo Bling and Ari Shafir call out. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing with the show. Javi's like Clickbait Studio. Yeah, yeah. Javi's like, fuck, dude, I ain't come here for this shit. I didn't want that smoke. But no, he invited me out when they were filming his version of the Dave Chappelle show. Yeah, what was it called? Mind They they invited us out for like the pilot episode, like the first thing. And I remember being in the green room and one of the writers was in there and some of the jokes from Carlos's monologue were going over my head because I'm like, what is this Tom Cruise reference? Like, how's, I don't, and then the writer's there, he's like, oh yeah, man, because, you know, if you say anything like some gay shit about Tom Cruise, he'll fucking sue you. And I was like, oh, that's, like, why? Anyway, you know, like so many of the jokes were like inside Hollywood type shit that hadn't made it. To like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that's how Hollywood works. Mm -hmm. So I was just in a green room. And then he had me uh, come out and perform like a song in front of the st studio audience. And the producers were there and everything. And it was, it, it was like part of the show or nothing. But 
But anyway, it's like mid show entertainment, like a- not like okay, we're done, but the cameras and everything are still set up. I want them to see you, oh, cool. type of thing. That's cool. And then there was like some shit going down backstage where he was pissed, like dealing with the network and shit. And I was just like, oh, that's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Early days. Yeah. Anyway, cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how he's like, man, that was a cool story. Hey, this ain't gonna make yeah, it. This ain't it, gonna make it, it right? You ain't airing this. You ain't airing this shit, right? <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so Javi's movie pick playlist. I know you uh-huh. you reference. Well, I know like Midnight loves Blood in Blood Out. Which are the ones uh-huh. from that genre that you fuck with? I, I def- definitely am heavy on, on Blood in Blood Out. Also, like mm-hmm. like that definitely, and I I share that with 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 a, a lot of, a lot of comics for some reason. I know my, my boy Mario Salazar loves it. My boy Larry Garza. In fact, Mario, Larry, and myself, and I can't remember who else at the moment. At the moment, I know there's someone else on the show. We got to perform uh, with uh, do a show at at Cine El Rey down in the valley uh, with Valente Rodriguez. Who played? Uh, he most famous for Ernie playing Ernie on the George Lopez show, but he also he also played uh, Frankie in Blood and Blood Out. Uh, and he uh, we did a show with him in front of the the mural, which was uh, painted by uh, uh, Alan Garcia. Rest in peace. He just passed away like a year ago. The, the artist that painted that that Cardinalismo. Mural, the mural where where where, where Paco you, you, they're they're wrestling or whatever and laughing mm-hmm. the kids you see it at the end of the movie well that's a real life mural painted by an artist in San Antonio and at that at time they were taking it around the kind kind of like like as an ins- installation like for people to go take pictures in front of it and see it in person so we got to do a sh- show they set it up on the stage we got to do a show in front of that mural so that was like one of my favorite damn show that's dope to do yeah that's cool mm-hmm. you know uh, Jacob Vargas. Uh, well, he was in uh, f- one of the Fridays, mm-hmm. I think next Friday. Now he's in like the Mayans and Sons of Anarchy and all that. Yeah. Well, he was a little kid on American Me. So I think that's honestly like where yeah, he, he first started. He, yeah, he played uh, Santana's uh, uh, little brother. With the gun, yeah. yeah. So uh, allegedly, like, I, I don't know that, I don't know if, I, if I'm getting this right, but like supposedly his mom worked at the flea market the swap meet and he you know somehow some way he heard about the casting like it was just one of those like by chance Mm -hmm. and that's the opportunity sometimes folks in la you know that's where that's where all the action was taking place and then after that man sky's the limit and next thing you know he's don't you know little ass tick warrior funny funny he was funny in uh the gabriel iglesias show too he played he played the best friend like the sidekick um, like, I, I worked yeah. with him one time um on some theater shit yeah but yeah but now nah, he killed it he's dope he does he does some stand-up no 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 it was oh. uh it was like some monologues okay like yeah one some man shows out. it was like a variety of characters and he had to play one of the things and he was in the back doing push-ups and shit i'm like okay i guess that's how some actors yeah. fucking guess you gotta do. i didn't know that was part of the fucking it acting game <laughs> Well, shit, man. Thanks for stopping by, Big Don. Uh, let yeah. them know your IG, uh, LunaversalComedy.com. LunaversalComedy.com. Uh, IG is Javi Luna Comedy. Uh, Luniversal Comedy is also my YouTube, so make sure you check that out for the release of uh, the special, Javi Luna, not for everybody. Yeah, man. In March, mark your calendars. Luna, Javi Luna, Luniversal Comedy. Also, we got Juan Perez, Big Don. What's up, man? What's what up? you got planned for 2023? I don't know. I'm just following you. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing, dog? I'm just this, riding them coattails. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm you right there, Chingo. You should have seen his face when I asked him, what you got planned? Motherfucker, where, 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 where we doing? Where, where we you rolling? Tell me. Where you, you keep see, asking me. Whose car are we you? taking? Yeah, yeah. I, who's driving? Who's taking a nap? <laughs> uh, and once again, man, the, the man that makes it happen from behind the scenes, DJ producer Big Robin. Thank building. you. This was a fun. This was a fun day. Yeah, fun day, man. We knocked out some episodes. So uh, uh, make sure y'all follow the YouTube channel and, and tune into the RSS feed mm-hmm. and subscribe to the newsletter. We're trying to expand and everything else. So I'll see you guys real soon. South Texas run January 25th, McAllen, 26th, South Padre Island, January 27th, Laredo. I'll see you there. Get your tickets now. Chingobleeding.com. Sass.